That's right. It's time for Inside the Matchup. This is where we go inside the matchups, the position matchups uh, this week. Or today, we've got wide receivers and tight ends. That's the theme. If you missed it yesterday, we talked about the matchups that we like and don't like for the running backs and the quarterbacks. Aaron, let's just start right there with the tight ends. Let's piggyback off of what we were just talking about. And I will ride in with my Cole Komet talk because he is my inside the matchup like for the tight end position. Uh, we just talked about how Cole Komet this week has been, uh, he'll have Justin Fields back, but it's just, it's more than, it's more than that. I know what people are going to say. And I know what you might have might say when you look at Cole Komet's schedule or uh, game this week, he's matched up against, uh, uh, he's matched up against, uh, uh, who, oh my God, why am I having a brain fart on who the Bears are playing? The Packers. Oh my God. The it, Packers. It, it, yeah. Go. Sorry. Just a mess. Cole Komet is the tight end that I like this week. He's matched up against the Green Bay Packers. Don't let it scare you that the Packers are 10th against opposing tight ends because Cole Komet is much better than that. He can outshine that. He can outscore that because the Packers, over the past five games, have allowed six touchdowns to opposing tight ends. That's where they're at on the season. They've been struggling lately against the tight end position. And before Justin Fields left, before he got injured, before he hurt his shoulder, he was able to have five touchdowns in three games with Justin Fields in those three games prior to him getting hurt. So Justin Fields is starting to like Cole Komet even more. You have the injury to Darnell Mooney. It's it's going to be okay with Cole Komet this week. He is my confident dart throw uh, against the Packers. And again, last time Cole Komet played the Packers, this offense for the Bears was not clicking. He had one target, zero receptions. He goosed you. He probably hurts you. So starting Cole Komet might feel uncomfortable this week against the Packers. You see the matchup, the 10th ranked team against the tight ends. You saw what he did last time against the Packers. You're uncomfortable. You're feeling weird. But I'm here to tell you it is okay to start Cole Komet this week because they've allowed six touchdowns in the last five games to opposing tight ends. And Cole Komet is becoming the favorite target for Justin Fields. Fire up Mr. Cole Komet this week. Um, sure. Uh, I'll just transition right into mine. Smooth transition. I'm going to go right into mine. Smooth transition. Uh, for, <laughs> for me, it's Evan Ingram. Uh, yes, we talked about it basically every show. If you're playing the Detroit Lions, fire them up, especially in the passing game there. Um, Evan Ingram's playing the Detroit Lions. They're a bottom half team against tight ends. They're not very good against anybody really in anything. Uh, again, fourth worst against the tight end position, allowing almost 12 fantasy points per game. Um, not giving up as many targets to the tight end position, only six and a half targets, which doesn't rank in the bottom five. It's literally about half of uh, half of the league. But Jacksonville wants to throw the football. There might be some concerns about there uh, with Travis Etienne. You might see a little bit more out of the passing game. And Evan Ingram has been involved in this offense. It's not like they don't have they don't have him on the field. We originally thought maybe it was a little bit of Dan Arnold. No, he's taken over that role as the guy who's playing 80% of the snaps. Um, hasn't been great over the last three weeks, including prior to the bye week. But there were a couple of games, three or four games prior to that, he was sitting at nine or better points. Um, I think he can get back involved here. Um, again, a game that I think is going to be high scoring. It's a risky play. It's why he's my number 12 tight end. It's not something that I'm confident in. But I do think Evan Ingram has a chance to be a fantasy value asset at the tight end position in week 13. Uh, again, Detroit. High scoring game. Doug Peterson likes to throw it. Evan Ingram might find his way into the end zone. And I do think he gets some targets um, when you're talking from the 20 to 20. So you went the exact, you went the opposite route of what I did because you went more matchup and with a player that has not produced as much as of late. I went with the guy who has produced, but has a tougher matchup. I, I got to ask you about that with Evan Ingram over the past three games, he's got, Five catches on seven targets, 26 yards, and no touchdowns over the past three games. Raiders, Chiefs, Ravens was his matchups. Obviously, this is a much juicier matchup than those. You're, you're not scared at all because of the, the production of Evan Ingram. It, it's the tight end. And Cole Komet's been bad the last two weeks. Like, And, and I get it. Justin Fields is not there. Like, it, there's a tight end. They're all bad. They're all bad. They're no, there's no good option unless your name is Travis Kelsey. Um, it had nothing to do with really – the matchup had a lot to do with it in this case. And I do think – you know how I'm not real bullish on matchups. Uh, but I am going to look at some matchups when it comes to tight ends because there's such a dart throw. Uh, there's nothing really to base your, your dart throw on. I can – 
I can look at the talent of Cole Komet and say, yeah, he's talented. He might have one target. I can look at the talent of Evan Ingram and say, oh, yeah, it should be this. He might have one target. I don't, I don't know. This is not a – these are all dart throws. I'm trying to – we're, we're trying to do our best to give projections based on who they're <laughs> playing and what you might see from their offense. I think this is a good spot, especially if I don't know about the health of, of a Travis Etienne where some of those check downs that go to the running back position might just be outlets to the tight end in that situation. So I'm trying to think about all the different ways that Evan Ingram can now be incorporated. If there is some concern about ET and I don't know if there is or not, uh, but maybe they try to go more of a passing route in this game and don't put a lot of workload on him running the ball. Um, that should increase Ingram's opportunities. And again, a bad defense. So I said, Hey, that's, that's the guy I'm rocking with. Um, but yeah, there's no science to this tight end thing. There's no, I, I can't sit here well, and as, as confident as I am about wide receivers or running backs because I don't know what to do with these tight ends. I know what to do with one tight end, Travis Kelsey. You pick him in every league and then you don't have to worry about doing this stupid shit. You can just say, he's in my lineup. That's all you got to do. When when do we start making fun of you for just having Travis Kelsey in your DFS lineups every week? I just thought that. that when he doesn't that. produce. But I, I had Ken Walker and he was producing and I get shit for it all the time. But you get you you get the pass. No, 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 no. It's coming. You didn't start it's with Ken Walker. Sunday. It's you coming, started with James Robinson and you hopped off the train, right? Yeah, that See, is true. You, I am a train. That's the difference. Is I will never hop off the okay. Travis Kelsey train. I'm that's my, my train well, with Travis Kelsey is choo choo coming down the tracks no every need, week. You have no need to hop off the Travis Kelsey train because hey. his train is just continuously running. I won the DFS again, and guess who my number one pick is this week. Travis Kelsey. Travis motherfucking Kelsey. There you go. Uh, I do. I do. Um, I do like the Evan Ingram pick, though. I think in this game against the, the Lions, the the Jaguars would be smart. To keep Trevor Lawrence hot. Keep him throwing. Keep him moving the ball. Keep building his confidence in a game matched up against a bad defense. Uh, I like your Evan Ingram start there this week. Uh, for my sit tight end, my my the guy I don't like this week. Uh, the matchup I don't like. It's Foster Moreau. And I know, please, everybody, I'm sorry to do this to you. Unbelievable. I am Un so sorry. Unbelievable. How are you going to lie to the people? Two days ago, you get on here, you, Foster Moreau, go pick him up. I posted it on TikTok. And now we, we here we are, we Friday, December, whatever day it is. And you're going to sit here and say this is the I, tight end you don't like after calling him a top five tight end against the Chargers this week? I, please explain yourself, Vinny. I, 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 I have some explaining to do, and I want to start off by saying I apologize for absolutely nothing. I will apologize for nothing on starting on, on talking about Foster Moreau having a bad matchup this week because he actually has a bad matchup. When you look deep inside of it, when you look deep, you got to go deep, Aaron. You got to go real, real deep to talk about Foster Moreau this week. The Chargers ranked 27th against opposing tight ends they they, they it's great it's, it's great sure great it's fantastic only tight own the only tight ends with more than 50 receiving yards against the chargers your boy kelsey david and joku and sure you throw in darren waller he's a raider foster moreau's a raider he can just fill this spot uh-uh not so fast sure waller gives you hope when you look but when you look deeper aaron i told you we're going deep the Chargers have only allowed two touchdowns to the tight end position this season, one being Travis Kelsey, who's on God level, and the other from Greg Dulcich. Only two touchdowns allowed to the tight end position because you can get beat elsewhere when you're playing the Chargers, not just the tight end position. You're going to have a great day from Devontae Adams. You're going to have a great day from Josh Jacobs. Foster Moreau may not see that, I think, that is what you're going to have to rely on when you're looking at Foster Moreau in this game because without touchdowns for Foster Moreau, his fantasy points, 4.3, 4.4, 9.1, that's great for a tight end, sure. 5.8, 7.4, 6 points. Sure, when you look at the down weeks of a tight end, the fact that we're talking about tight ends, that's that might be great or whatever. I, I don't think it's great. That's not where I'm trying to throw my dart this you week. I'm not trying to throw my dart. You are unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can't. How do you do this to the people? How do you do this to the people? The, char the, Chargers are allowing, the Chargers are allowing a little over four catches and 62 yards. Third worst in the NFL, 62 yards. They're allowing per game to the tight end position. Everybody in the NFL is not giving up tight end touchdowns. 
outside of the Arizona Cardinals, a lot of teams are right where the where the Chargers are as far as giving up touchdowns to the tight end position. Yeah, they're not targeted very often. Maybe they don't leave, receive a lot of receptions, but I will take the 62 yards because if you give me four catches for 62 yards, if you're Foster Moreau, which is all I need from you, that's a great day for a tight end. I can't believe I'm sitting here and defending but Foster talk, Moreau talk against the guy that's going to be only- top five. Only four tight ends have had more than 50 yards against them all season. All season. They're, and one they're of them allowing is allowing 62 Price. yards a game to the tight end position. But only one tight end has actually had more than 50 yards. Only one. Only one tight end has had more than 50. Sure, maybe they're allowing two tight ends to get to that 60 yards. But either way, only one, uh, only two have had it. Uh, only Kelsey, Njoku, and Waller have all had it. But you look at that. I don't try. I don't trust it. I we're talking you're, about dark. You're absolutely killing me with this take because you cannot come on to the Sac City podcast and lie did. to our viewers. Two days I, ago, you said I, top I, five this week, and now you're gonna say. Don't even start him. You're not throwing your dart there because he's not. You gotta look deeper. Did I actually you say look deeper? Yes. Did I actually say that he's that you have to start him this week? You Were said those he's in the top words? five. You said this he's week? in the top five. Yes, against the Chargers. No. You said top five against the no. Chargers. You are unbelievable. No. You need to apologize. No. <laughs> This is unbelievable. I'm gonna, I when I clip wait. this TikTok, when I clip this TikTok, please insert whoever's clipping it, if it's me or you, please insert clown face now on me. <laughs> yes. Clown shoes, bro. We're anyway, going to have the honking so, and everything. So Vinny went from top five to just don't start bad There's matchup. Foster no Rose. way I You make that. your mind up. You make your mind up, uh, fantasy community. T- tell him he's wrong. Tell him he's right. What? Which side are you on? Let us know because I don't know anymore. I'm throwing darts everywhere and – it first it landed on Foster Moreau, then it didn't. Let me get to my tight end that I'm not starting this week um, because I don't trust him anymore, and that's Tyler Higby. Uh, we can talk about it. We don't have to talk long on Tyler Higby. Last week he gave me the big-ass goose egg, and I wasn't for it. Uh, I'm done with Tyler Higby. Bryce Perkins underneath center. It's not Matt Stafford. Uh, he did not register a target or a catch, and they didn't have Allen Robinson. They didn't have Cooper Cup. They're down to Van Jefferson, Ben Skoranek, uh, Tutu Atwell, Brandon Powell, Lance McCutcheon. Why isn't Tyler Higby being targeted? I don't know. Maybe he's still hurt. I'm not trusting him anymore. He's not in my lineups. He is my fantasy sit of the week. I don't care that they're playing Seattle. I don't care that Seattle's defense can be exposed at times. I don't want any part of Tyler Higby for the remainder of the season. If you want to jump on that train, feel free. I'm off of it. Tyler Higby is dead to me. That's all I got. I'm dead to me. <laughs> I, I don't know why you're looking. You know I'm right. I should. I oh, I just listened to a word for word. I am the biggest clown. Piece of shit. <laughs> I am the biggest clown in the world. Like hey, this is hey, this. You you are you say this all the time. You are the host for a reason. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I. I have yeah, lost my I have lost my card on I apologize you know I said I apologize for nothing I apologize for everything I am the biggest piece of shit in the entire world there's lots of people and I say this about a lot of people normally normally I say this to people but now it's to me there's a lot of pieces of shit in this world a lot of them Dylan AJ, lots of pieces of shit in this world. I am number one on that list for the absolute clown statement that I had before. I apologize to Foster Moreau. I apologize to you, Mr. Aaron Mukes. I apologize to the city. I apologize to everybody looking, everybody watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button <laughs> for more clown statements. <laughs> You're unbelievable. <laughs>